G'day guys, it's Jara here, and welcome back to the Tank of the Golden Sneeze. We're back, y'all! We're gonna find out who took the Golden Sneeze. So we're just gonna resume the game. We arrive well in time for the night train, and we meet up with a pair of friend faces before leaving. Hank, Mary, I didn't know you guys were uh, taking the night train. Oh, no, no, never mind. Nope, oh, that was not a female. Oh. Paul, Peter, I didn't know you had a business in the next town over. That is, I can't remember their voices. I don't remember these two. I don't remember theirs. There's an investment party over there, so this gorilla wants to crash it. Peter, have you forgotten the best part already? Strong cider straight from the tap. Dad, I'm happy you set you're selling me a good example by taking the train. By the way. By the way, can you say hi to Mr. Adams for me if you see him? He seems to be talking taking the train tonight as well. Hall, we need to load up our robot. Kids, we'll see you later. I'm not sure I'm it's a good idea for Mr. Abrams to get on the train. How come, detective? Good to see you, Mr. Abraham Abrams. Can't read English either. I believe it'd be unwise for you to take this train ride. There's a good chance that the golden sneeze is on there, as well as the thief, and he or she may try to harm you. Come on, detective. Do you think I'll be scared of a little threat like that? I'll see you in the Bristol wagon. Honey, everything okay? The situation's just got a bit more dangerous, but it's okay. I can handle it. Mary, what are you doing here? Sapphire? I'm just about to go on an epic quest with my hubby. It's great to see you two together for once. I need to get my luggage to my cabin now, but I'll see you later. Take care, you two. See you later, Sapphire. You two know each other? Yes, from Alice's self-defense party. Why? I'm about to get on a train with the perpetrator of a crime, the main victim of the house, the main suspect of said house, and my dear family. Also, my wife seems to spend time with an alleged criminal. I just wanted a quiet train ride. Don't worry, love. Don't worry, my love. Oh, why did I go British? Me. Don't worry, my love. I'll protect ya. Chapter 3. Following the trail. Usually I enjoy a good train ride, but there are too many important people on this ride for it to be enjoyable. Fortunately, I came prepared. I told the police force to take some cautions over the, at the next station, and I told the con conductor to secure all the goods and to keep an extra close eye on the passengers. It's a good thing you got that part of the phone of yours so you can call everyone involved as needed. I'm not too fond of it, to be honest. I mean, it wasn't required by the job, why would anyone want this? It runs out of steam within two days, then I need to find a tap to refill the water. And if I'm lucky, someone calls me on it so I can say, Hi, this is Hank, I've got a phone. With a landline four feet away, but I refuse to stand up and walk over to it. Grr, I'm Hank. I hate new things. I want to communicate with old smoke signals. Man, Come on, you gotta admit that was funny. <laughs> that was a spot on imitation, honey. Too bad it was of me. Cheer up, honey. I know you're stressed out by this ride, but you can't blend in like that. Let's get a smile on your face so we can find the thief. Also, we shouldn't be talking about the thief this loud, but that's a-okay. 
As always, you may be a daft, but you're definitely right. Let's get to business. Yes, let's do that. We can go in two directions on this train. Firstly, there's the front end of the car, front end with the cargo, the coach section. Sapphire went that way. So if there's any trouble out here, it's probably there. Then at the back of the train, there's the Bis Bristow wagon. Mr. Abraham went there, and since they have snacks, I reckon your parents are there too. So it's like a mullet, business in the front, party in the back. You truly are your father's daughter, aren't you? Do you really want me to, to make a joke about their high chance of relaxing them then there? You've already done so, so let's not. Where do you think we should go? I think we should search the f front of the train. Let's go to the front of the train and have a nice cup of tea with Sapphire. I'm not sure that's what I want to do. Hank, you disappoint me. Sapphire's done nothing wrong. Not yet, anyway. Unless, of course, she's stolen the golden sneeze. Then she would have already done something wrong. And I'm guessing you think that she's as guilty as a kid with a stolen cookie in the hands? Nope, it's innocent until proven guilty, honey. Then let's pay her a visit and prove her guilty. I guess I'm missing something. Let's see. Whose coat section is this? Honey, what are you doing? Isn't it obvious I'm trying to find Sapphire's luggage? You can't do that. People who aren't Sapphire will be very cross with you if you violate their privacy. Come to think of it, Sapphire wouldn't be too happy about it either. Oh, on the contrary, Detective. I'm always happy about everything. Whatever it was you were discussing. Sapphire, are you enjoying your adventure on the Grand Train? Is it, Sugar? I'm traveling because of a business meeting I'm going to for my restaurant. Just the business meeting? Then why are you taking all this luggage with you? Well, I bought these clothes on my way to, my, to the station and I wanted to try them on. What'd you get? What'd you get? Honey, who are you? You have to come over and take a look. Where are you going? Just a minute, honey. We'll be right back. Aw. Later. Or at least much later that Hank would have liked. And we're back. Took you long enough. Hank, I didn't listen to your rambling about work just to remain completely ignorant about it. I quite literally went undercover. Interesting. What did you find out? Well, Sapphire took all the fancy wardrobe with her, but no cash or anything. It seems that she just took all of it with her, with her to have something to do on the train, you know. Try out clothes. So what did you find out? Well, I found a tight black onesie with a hole in one of the legs. It might be used as some sort of underwear for overly revealing clothing, or it could be used as a cat suit in a burglary. Burglary. Well done, love. I couldn't have done it better myself. That would have involved you going to the ladies' room, Hank. That's a very bad idea. Let's move on to the front and see if we can find something out of the luggage compartment. We were near, we were near the luggage compartment on the front when suddenly... I didn't feel right. The train should have hit the brakes. Should have hit that brakes that hard on the track. Honey, I think you should take a look at the window. That's Tomer. Did that little girl just stop a train? I've seen her do worse. Out of my way. Let me in. Good evening, everybody. This isn't a robbery. I just here to get something that belongs to me. Also, hi, detective. Surprised to see you here. So if anyone has a huge lump of gold in the shape of a nose, your cooperation would be highly appreciative. And don't even think about moving a muscle. Stop. Tommy, stop. This is madness. You're scaring my Hank. I'll make you pay for this. Apart from that, holding a train is a serious offense. What are you doing here? Detective, you have... Have you talked to Abraham about the Golden Sneezes history? Mr. Hamilton told me a thing or two. The story with the little girl, right? Tell me, Detective, did you believe that what he told you was true? Well, it might be. It might have been true. I'm sure it holds at least some truth. I'm just not sure which part. Detective, I can assure you that it was all true. So the monk. So the monk. True. 
and the molten gold. Unfortunately, true as well. Wait, so what was happening for real? Then how does she know for sure? But while we were talking, an all too familiar thug tried to sneak away. All right, you distracted me. You get back here. We weren't sure if we were supposed to protect the little girl from Big Thug or the poor man from the kid with explosives. Either way, we gave a chase. Look, little girl, put down the explosives and let the, let the grown up go, okay? You have my sneeze. Now, I'm not gonna let you go that easily. Hold right there, Tomé. What the? Hey! Hey, hold on! Detective, you're the worst. I just had him. Let me fix that. Unit 2, we got a runner. Monitor. See, that fell all of his comes in handy. I mean, grr, punch the bad guys. So, man, it's time we had a serious talk. Let me go. So, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say will... You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say will... Be used in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. If you do not have one, an attorney will be put, pointed towards you. Do you understand your rights? I suggest you exercise it. We'll have a serious talk right after, right after, right after the police are done with that guy. All right, detective, what do you want? That's a good question, but I'm not going to outright tell her that I want to know what she's doing here. As long as I keep her talking, she won't want to run away or wreck any havoc. Let me see what I can talk about with this kid. Maybe if I ask her age positively, I can coax her into talking. You can offend children by telling them they're too young, so you have to be careful. You want to know what? In that case, tell me. Since you know so much about the golden sneeze, tell me more about it. Detective, truly, you know nothing. Fair enough, but tell me then. Those beakers hanging around your torso seem to hold a lot of explosives. How long did it take you to make those? Mixing must take ages. To be honest, it took me 20 years to master the craft of making these explosives. And it's none of your business what I'm going to do with them. 20 years? How long? How, how did you? Wait a minute. To man, things don't add up. You appear randomly blowing things up just to get the golden smith. Tell me. You can't be doing this alone. Where's your partner? Detective, why are you even talking here? I am interrogating you. As long as you're here, you won't do harm to no one. So you're just wasting my time. I think it's time for me to go wish you luck with the thug. How so? He doesn't have the sneeze. At least, he didn't want to punch him in the gut. <sighs> oh, units, have you found the golden sneeze? I'm sorry, detective. There's nothing out the train. The ride didn't have it on him. Everything okay, honey? I'm not sure. Fortunately, if I'm correct, the gone sneeze is still back in the city. Unfortunately, there's a large chance that the thug was a transporter and he was just dropping it off somewhere. It's probably back in the hands of the thief again. Chin up, honey. You'll catch him. You're right. It should be easy for the self-proclaiming greatest detective in the world. And then I'm gonna punch him. I reckon it's the go. Hi, anyone here? Hey, I know you. I saw you on the train. What are you doing here? Can't go. I have a hobby. I'm still in town. And I'm not like I'm on the run. Oh, girls. Miss Birchall called and said she couldn't make her, but she will be joining us next time. Apart from her, everyone invited to this workshop is present. This looks like it's gonna be a lot. This looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun, Miss Capone. Thank you, Tomé. I know we all see each other on a regular basis, but I prepared this speech and I wanted to know what he ladies thought. A speech? Oh, I want to hear it. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to Sapphire's culinary creative class. With this class, you too can start a restaurant that makes more figures than you can shake a diet at. Wow. What do you think? Or should I go with a restaurant that makes better figures than even my pretty self? I think it's perfect just the way it is. Flying fight ends. Ugh, this case makes me so mad. This dog we call might have been one of Sapphire's boys, 
but by the looks of it, he was operating on his own. He was definitely hired as a transporter, but he keeps his lips closed as who we might be hired by. As they often do, he even denied being hired by anyone in the first place. That doesn't matter. We just have to focus and find the person from Booty Stall, the Golden Sneeze. The pool of suspects is over isn't overly large, and they all could have done it just as well. Maybe none of them did. And I have a feeling that the suspect may be backed into a very unexpected corner. I think I need to talk to everyone once more, then maybe figure out who stole the golden sneeze. Who shall I visit? Um, Mr. Abraham. Good afternoon, Mr. Abraham. Why, hello, detective. I was just on my afternoon stroll. How are you? I'm tying up loose ends in the investigation. I was hoping you could help. But of course, detective. What do you need to know? I want to know who had access to the museum before we reinforced its security. That's an old wound, detective. But I guess we'll have to address it. I'm the only one with keys. I close the museum every night and open it again each morning. Practically no one goes in and out without my permission. It should have been secure enough. Of course, it doesn't help much when they take out the wall. I can't believe they did that to my um, poor old museum. Thank you, Mr. Abraham. It might not have helped much, but I have a clearer picture now. I want to see if she knows the explosive to blow up a wall. Mm, I don't think it's hers. Um. <laughs> Oh no, I found a big lump of gold. I hope no one will try to blow me up. Detective, that is the worst bait I've ever heard someone use in centuries. But it worked, didn't it? Fine, what do you want from me? I have to trick her into giving me some information or did I ask? Ask her outright. Tell me, do you have any holes in your clothes? Sure. One for my head, two for my arms, two for my legs. What's your point? No, I mean, did you tear your clothes at any point last week? Detective, if this is what you call me for, you're wasting my time. No, don't. I wish you'd cut that out. So that wasn't the best thing. I love my restaurants. I love the food. I love the electric candabras. I don't want anything about this place to change. Except for the noisy detective who keeps barging in before any customers do. Sorry to barge in, Sapphire, but I need to complete my investigation. I'd already guessed you would. Look, Hank, I'm getting tired of this song and dance. Let's just get this over with. I'm terribly busy and I got a lot of customers coming. And I've even given workshops. I even give workshops in the morning. I'm stressed out and I have... And I just had a beautiful moment with my, my, my restaurant. You talk about your restaurant as if it were a person. Don't you talk about my baby like that. Sapphire, I want to ask you a serious question. A very cinematic one. I will have you failed to answer upon until now. I am a cop home, detective. I never failed to do anything once you question. But the night of the gold sneeze was stolen. Sapphire, I want you to be honest with me. Where were you when the night of the Golden Sneeze was stolen? Hank, I thought you'd never ask. But seriously, I was on my self-defense class. Ask Mary. You're right. Mary did tell me she was self-defense class that night, night, night. And that she met up with you at the place. I hadn't put the two and two together. Well, with that out of the way, could you please leave now? We'll see each other soon. I don't count on it. Peter and Paul. I don't like saying this, but Peter and Paul know Mr. Adam and they might have a connection. So let's make nice visits to the in-laws. Howdy, Pete. Nope, oh, you're, you're, you're a rich boy. Howdy, Pete. How do you do? Not so well. A bit lonely in the factory today. Well, that's happened before, hasn't it? What's the matter? We found this letter at the bottom of the mail pile. It's from our biggest client. He says canceling his order and Paul didn't tell me about it. This is from over a week ago. 
It may put the whole factory at risk of closure. What am I going to do? Calm down, Peter. Did Paul mention where he was going? It's Paul. He said he was run. He said he was running some errands, talking to clients. Is that unusual for him to do this time of week? No. I'm sorry, Hank. I got carried away there. Paul is probably just talking to clients like always. But I'm not happy about him not telling me about the letter. I'm going to look for that big gorilla when I'm done turning up, fixing the robots. There you go. Everything's probably okay again. Thanks for stop. Thanks for stopping by, Hank. I sometimes think or do stupid things when I'm left alone. You're welcome, Pete. I'll see you later. See you around. Something doesn't feel right about the letter. It wasn't open yet. Peter only read it just now. That means Paul knew that the fact he was in a lot of trouble. Yet he didn't tell Peter about it at all. Paul, I really hope you didn't steal the golden sneeze to fix your finance problems. Hmm. The day hasn't completely passed by the time I return to the station. Good, maybe I could do some paperwork then go home early. Very, very too soon. Dad, did we buy a woman who believed was robbing a bank? Hold it, constable. Do you have any proof that she did it? Well, she was found in the bank with a bat that registered to the bank was filled with the brim with cash. Well, that sounds... Wait. Is it who I think it is? I'm afraid so, sir. Fine, let's get this over with. So we meet again, detective. So it seems. Look, Sapphire. There are a reason you're my usual suspect, but this is just simply ridiculous. You were caught red-handed with a bag of money that was registered to the robbed bank. It was my money, and I got that bag from the bank last week. It only seemed fitting to bring my money back in it. Maybe she hadn't robbed the bank, but my investigation on the museum is still ongoing. Since she's here, I might as well interrogate her. I have to be careful, though. She doesn't like to be accused of things. Maybe I can go a bit talking kind. Sapphire, how about we have a nice old chat in this room, like we did so many times before? What a nice cup of tea. Like when they arrested my father and you had to interrogate me? Sure, why not? A short while later. Thank you for the tea, Constable. Now, Hank, what do you want to talk to me about? Well... Sapphire, have you lost some weight? You seem quite fit nowadays. Well, yes, Hank. I did lose a bit of weight. I've been exercising a lot. Is that so? I've had the weight loss. You took up climbing again, didn't you? It feels so liberating to climb around, the wind blowing through your hair, the view. No one can hold you back. It's not like they tear, tear up my reputation. I manipulate everything. Baby, there's nothing holding me back. At least as long as there's no roof over your head. Glad you starting to talk. You really handled the rope. Where'd you learn the art? I took some extra knot tying lessons with the boys, and now we can go abseiling together. I don't know if I feel comfortable with her boys knowing the way around ropes. Old friends catching up. You tie the rope to a pulley, then you cl climb and descend any while you like. Wait a minute. If a pulley was silent, it wouldn't have needed a lot of oil. If I had an oil stain in the crime system scene, it would have been leaking oil from a pulley. Or you could have used it in any building like the museum. Wait, what? Gotta go back. Well, so much having a nice cup of tea together. So I'm afraid we made some mistake. You rest, Miss Capone. Such as? Well, the serial number of the bag she found was found with is the same as the empty bag that went missing at bank a week ago. So the teller probably gave it to her by accident and Sapphire thought she could keep it. I'm afraid so, sir. Alright, Constable. I deliver her the news myself. Next time, make sure you have the proof straight. Miss Capone, you're free to go. Finally. Yes, yeah, sorry for the mix up. Since we're on the topic of accusation, how's your investigation going? Pretty well. You might already have guessed that. Oh, you haven't got a clue, have you, Hank? What makes you say that? Hank, you're too much of a softy. Anyone under the right circumstances would have been 
pressure to sue. You let you feel the cloud's judgment of the museum owner, your family. And even little old me. If I saw so far, explain to me. Explain to me how. Do your worst. Well, have you ever considered that the museum is doing well enough? Is anyone who's tried to lure people in the museum with the snow story of the golden sneeze being stolen? Maybe, you know, someone with money problems? Bigger and poor having finance troubles with their factory. What if someone just found the golden sneeze to be dazzling? Or what if their thief is just playing with you and has actually run under your nose? She's trying to throw Mary under the pivotal bus. Thank you. Thank you for your insight, Miss Carbone. I think I just cracked the case. Please wait here. Hey, did you just laugh at the door? Yes, Miss Carbone. You are now a suspect in a burglary case. Hey! Showdown. It is time for me to point out among the thieves. And then, then, then first, I'm going to point out a suspect. Then I'll review the case and see what proof I've to incriminate. If it's them, then I'll go out and arrest. I have to be careful though, once I choose a criminal, I can't do my actions. Let's get this over with. Who do we suspect? <sighs> well, I don't. I don't think it's Tom. Tom Air. I think it's Paul. I'm suspecting Paul. What shall we do? I think review Paul. Things aren't going well with Peter and Paul's factory. Paul might have stolen the guns needs to cover his debits. The museum is missing a wall and the robot Peter and Paul produced could easily cause the damage. Paul, you're the father of my dear wife, but you seem to be rather suspicious. I'm suspecting Paul. What else should we do? I'm just going to say arrest. Let's arrest Paul. Alright, let's go and arrest my father-in-law. Honey, I'm sorry to barge in like this, but have you seen Paul? Wait, what happened? Paul had to run some errands and he said he went to the train. Paul had to run some errands and said he went to the train station. Peter, Mary, don't be alarmed. Back to go after him. Whatever happens, it's going to be okay. I'll be right back. Paul, hold it right there. Harsh business. Paul, what's going on here? Paul, I'm sorry, but these men need to search your person. Wait, why? So we found this. It's the golden sneeze. I found it. I found it. I found it. Paul, what? What do you have to say for yourself? It was planted there. Paul, you better have very strong defense in the court. I don't want to put you behind bars. Dad, what's going on? Mary, you shouldn't have followed me. Paul, what did you do? Not you too, Peter. Don't worry, guys. It's just a bump in the road, and I'll turn out fine in the end. Take him away, men. Later in court. Court is in session. Case Paul Smith v. the state. Paul Smith versus the state. The potential charges are for burglary, theft, and vandalism. Detectives, despite the defense being your father-in-law, can we continue on the case? Yes, Your Honor. Hank, if I'm gonna be convicted of anything, it better be the best darn detective I've ever met. That doesn't make it any better, Paul. Detective, you led the investigation. Tell me why did the defense break into the museum? Finance trouble at work. Your Honor, Mr. Smith was having trouble keeping the company afloat. He was going bankrupt and needed money. And in the end, it didn't... Didn't... Oh my god. My neck is really hurting. I didn't even need the thing because the company shares went back up. It was foolish of me. Detective Demolition Wall, a no small fate of an older man, how did he manage it? He used a giant robot. Your Honor, Mrs. Smith owns a giant robot factory, as in the robots are giant, the factory itself is fairly small. Mrs. Smith knows how to operate a giant robot, so he used one to break through the wall of the museum to steal the gold. I'm sorry, Hank. Not as sorry as I am. Detective Mrs. Smith lives and works miles away from the museum. How did he get the museum in the middle of the night? He hid during early visits. Your Honor, Mrs. Smith visited the museum during the day, hid in the corner, and then waited to steal the golden sneeze at night. Detective, I don't believe you. The thief broke in from the outside. That doesn't make sense. Damn it. Very well, then. Detective, do you have any proof that Mrs. Smith is actually at the scene? I'm afraid I do, Your Honor. We found a piece of expensive blue fabric. It matches the hole from... Oh, no. Um, coat. Coat. 
This place is him to see the crime. Is this new to the Halloween coat? You wearing a coat? Um, yes, I'm wearing it. Woo! Detective, your evidence is incomplete, but there is enough to convict him. Miss Mitch, do you have anything to say for yourself? Yes, you, I do, Anna. I stole the artifact using one of my robots to burst the rule. When the golden seized my possession, I became scared and hired a man to transport me so the police would be chasing someone else. I hoped to finance my factory with the money I would have gotten from selling the golden sneeze. Stealing the artifact was stupid of me. I didn't consider the consequences it had with others or to the trouble it bring to this town. I'm donating enough money to the museum to pay for the damages and I accept whatever punishment you give me. Well, I was going to make you pay for the damages anyway. But it's also clear to me that you acted out of fear and you didn't mean to cause harm to anyone. Now I'm still sending you to the slammer, but it will be one with low security. I'm giving you all, giving you a one year jail sentence, six months with probation afterwards. If you behave well enough, you'll be out in six months. Your Honor, as I said, I accept whatever punishment you give me. In that case, this case is closed. Paul quietly went to the police and he was brought to jail. Mr. Abraham was happy to get the sneeze back with, at the same time, he was shot that one of his party buddies was responsible for the crime. It was hard for Peter to run the factory in his home, but he managed to return to it being profitable. During jail time, Paul constantly wrote an apology letter to Peter and Mr. Abraham. Although both had a very accepted his apology, the guilt kept nagging him. Six months later, Paul was released and he was immediately returned to the work in the factory. Everything was bad to how it was. The end! Just thanks to our friends and family, everyone who played tested the demo and the full game, everyone who encouraged us on social media, and all the wonderful people got to meet along the way. Let's return. Thank you for playing. That is it for Detective Hank and the Golden Sneeze, the two-part series. I could play it again and get something different, but I think that's where I'll leave this game. So, thank you guys so much for watching, and if you liked it, let me know in the comments below and tell me what was your favourite character. Your Did you see that it was Paul or not? I don't know. Anyway, see you guys in the next video. Sarcasm out. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. Which, 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 which,